Hi, welcome to The Honest Channel. I'm Claire Johnson and if you've not watched one of my videos before, I'm a journalist with a keen interest in ageing well and looking and feeling good for as long as possible. And as well as sharing my own views and experiences, I talk to a whole host of experts on this channel so we can learn together. This year has been a big one in terms of skincare innovation and how much I've learned personally about that balance between stimulating our skin to maximise its health and productivity and overstimulating it and kind of defeating the purpose or in some cases causing damage. And perhaps the biggest lesson I learned in 2022 is that when it comes to skincare, less is more. There are so many active ingredients being touted around at the moment and you could end up buying and applying serum after serum after serum. And I don't think our skin or our wallets will thank us for it. So what are some of the skincare products out there that we could pretty much glaze over for the time being and just focus on simple but effective ingredients? Now, before we look at some of the lotions and potions we don't need, I wanna flag a skin savior that I've just discovered for anyone who has, like me, been experiencing dry, chapped lips in the cold of winter. If you live somewhere where it doesn't get cold in winter, I am so envious right now. We have had a cold snap here in the UK and it's been minus five in the daytime where I am in Scotland. Fortunately, it's easing off now, but my lips became extremely dry and sore from walking around in the extreme cold and usually a bit of a vino moisturizer does the trick but not even that was helping this time. Then my doorbell rang and I took a surprise delivery from Patchology known as the name suggests for their face patches and they'd sent me a little Christmas box of things to try which was really kind of them but in it was this lip service gloss to balm. Now often I find lip balms a bit irritating and lip glosses are good aesthetically but aren't very hydrating and are sometimes the opposite. However, because it was there, I tried it and it's honestly just the thing for winter. It's like a protective gel patch and it traps moisture under a heavy gloss balm that stays on for hours. And it's totally non-irritating and very soothing because it's got aloe in it. And it has made such a difference to me this past week. It's 12 pounds in the UK and $15 in the US. So I'll link to it in the video description if you wanna check that out. But the Gloss Balm and Kiehl's Ultimate Strength Hand Moisturizer really have been skin saviors over the past week. But now for the things we don't need. Now over the past year, if there's one thing that stood out to me from the interviews and research I've done is that amidst the completely baffling and overwhelming array of skincare products out there and so much marketing hype, our best defense is to keep it simple, sticking to a core few effective anti-aging products that include a good hydrating and balancing cleanser. I also use a vitamin C serum in the morning, followed by a moisturizer and then a sunscreen. In the summer, sometimes I just wear the sunscreen without the moisturizer and that's it. In the evening, I use tretinoin in place of the vitamin C, but it's just the same routine minus the sunscreen. Now, keeping it simple means I can spend a bit more from time to time on those hero products that are going to hopefully make a real difference alongside the skin clearing and smoothing retinoid. Now, those more expensive heroes that I'm using at the moment, well, in both cases, they're moisturizers that I'm trialing. So I've stepped down from using Adipose Active face cream twice daily to now just using it in the evenings. Um, you can watch my recent three month review here if you've not seen it. Then in the mornings, I'm using Calisim stem cell derived multi-action cream, which I'll be feeding back on in a couple of months. I've listed everything that I currently use in the video description if you wanna take a look. I go for inexpensive cleansers, vitamin C, retinoid and makeup, and that's how I keep costs down. And I have a very minimal routine. So I wanted to do a video on the kind of marginal products are really hyped, which, which I don't think we really need. If you're like me, you may have a fear of missing out on skincare products. So you see something advertised, promising results, and you instantly want to try it. And that's the cycle that I've been trying to step away from. And that mission actually coincided with a viewer asking me if I'd read this book 
Skin Intelligent by uh, Dr. Natalia Spearings. Now, she's a British dermatologist with a TV show here called Skin A&E. I would love to interview her on the channel, so I've put a request in, fingers crossed. But her book aims to bring us a guide to what we really need to know to get great skin. And she's also a big believer in less is more, which is why I really connected with what she has to say. I'll link to the book in the description in case you're interested in buying it. She bases every recommendation purely on the evidence and proven science. So as you'd imagine, she's an advocate of tretinoin, also known as Retin-A, and sunscreen, both very well evidenced. For sun-induced skin pigmentation, she uses hydroquinone, and she's also got good things to say about glycolic acid for smoothing and brightening your complexion without affecting the skin's barrier. And she approves of salicylic acid for skin clearing and acne. So these are just a few standout recommendations that chime with my own views and experience. And as for what we don't need, well, hyaluronic acid factors in there as something she sees as being overhyped. It's another ingredient I promise I will look at more closely in the coming months. I'm just trying to line up the best experts to talk to on that one because it's not straightforward. But there has been some discussion in the skincare community about whether it really is all that beneficial for your skin. Some studies suggest low molecular hyaluronic acid, which is often marketed as a more desirable and expensive version of it because it could more easily penetrate the skin. But it's been linked with having a potentially inflammatory effect on the skin. Our bodies and the cells within them are a complex network and we don't quite understand all the signaling that occurs between these cells. So, we just need to be cautious over how much we throw at and on our skin at any one time. Now, topical hyaluronic acid is marketed as being able to draw moisture from the atmosphere into your skin to leave it plump and hydrated. But some dermatologists and biologists argue that there's often not enough moisture in the air to do that. So instead, it's gonna take it from your own skin and pull it to the surface, ultimately leaving it more dehydrated in the longer term. So, in other words, there are still a lot of question marks around hyaluronic acid. But what I would say is if you love using it and you think it's done wonders for your skin, then I also think we are good judges of wor what works for our own skin. But if you haven't seen particularly good results from it, maybe it's one you could do without for a while or use less frequently to save some money. I've dropped it from my routine for the time being. Generally, a more cautious rather than gung-ho approach to skincare makes sense. And let me tell you, over the past five years, I've been the queen of gung-ho when it comes to my skin, trying anything and everything as a kind of fun science project because I find it so fascinating, but 2022 was definitely the year for me of putting the brakes on, asking more questions, doing deeper research and limiting my choices. Among the other products we don't need, according to Dr. Natalia Spearings, and which I've got to say I strongly agree with, are toners or astringents, which, you know, remember the old adage, cleanse, tone, moisturize. Well, toners are pretty much unnecessary. And she says they probably strip the skin of oil and disrupt your skin barrier or stratum corneum. She also gives a thumbs down to eye creams and says the idea that they're specially formulated to be less irritating is not evident from looking at the ingredients. So in most cases, it's just another way to squeeze more money out of us for the same thing. To date, I've never found an eye cream that made a big difference. She reckons serums in general are just more watery versions of moisturizers and doesn't believe we benefit from layering them on our skin. Face masks are a waste of time and money according to Dr. Spearings. I too have never been a fan of face masks, I have to say, partially because they're a bit of a faff and I rarely have time to apply them, but I also think they're just a bit gimmicky and I've not seen a huge benefit from them, certainly not a lasting one. But similarly, if you're someone who likes a bit of a pamper and you think masks give you a short-term you know, hydration or skin clearing boost, then they're not gonna do you any harm in most cases, but something we can probably do without. So I've just plucked out 
A few of the things from the book that chimed with my own views of what we don't need. She does go into much more detail on the full kind of gambit of products. Where I kind of deviate from her is that if something hasn't got concrete evidence behind it, she pretty much dismisses it. Whereas I think there are a few interesting things that I just think we need to understand more about. That includes light therapy, radio frequency, which I, th I think can be useful. It just needs better regulation and more research, like urgently. I am also very interested in using peptides in skincare. They're the building blocks of proteins and growth factors, which are naturally occurring proteins produced in our cells. And they can be derived from humans and animals by taking them from umbilical cords and also plant cells. And I think they have enormous potential in skincare and you know health generally, and that they're potentially the future of skincare, but we still have a lot to learn there. And I will be exploring that and much more in 2023, including bringing you a new debate format in which experts trade views around a skincare topic or ingredient. So look out for that. I'm very excited about it. For now, I just wanna say happy holidays and all the best for the new year. For those who have followed me and supported me in 2022, I'm hugely grateful. Thank you for staying with me and for all the encouragement and a big welcome to those who may have just joined my channel. I hope you'll enjoy learning with me. I have learned so much from your comments and experiences this year as well. So thank you for those. And also do let me know today what you think about this simplified approach to skincare that I've been talking about and whether it's something you want to try too or are already doing. For now, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.